In this video, I push my creative abilities as far as I possibly can in a completely new medium to me, wood carving. This video is sponsored by Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Something tells me this video is gonna get messy. <laughs> Let me give you a quick tour of the clean room. I oh, you want to say the kill room, it's the plastic. This is just my studio with a marquee in it. It's not the first time I've done it. I actually got this idea because I did it for the stone carving video. It's gonna be a lot of wood chips, a lot of sawdust. I have these big blocks of wood to carve. This is a turbo plane and this is an industrial wood carver. I'm confused. You think you would have worked all this out beforehand? I'd like to figure it out as I go along. It's more, it's more, I'm a kinesthetic learner. Kinesthetic. He gets it. Got a starter set of uh, hand chisels. <gasps> oh my God, that feels so good. I will figure it out as I go. I will take my time and be safe. And I will try and make the coolest thing possible. And fortunately, I have a sponsor that is not only a very cool game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but also a very cool source material to create an artwork of. I mean, look at that. Assassin's Creed Valhalla invites players to live the life saga of Eivor, a fierce Viking raider raised on tales of battle and glory. Eivor, by the way, can be playable as a male or female, and the game is set in a really dynamic, beautiful open world, set against the brutal backdrop of England's Dark Ages. Eivor was driven from Norway due to the endless wars and dwindling resources, and you as a player have to carve out a new future for your clan, reliving the ruthless fighting style of the Viking warriors with a completely revamped combat system that includes the ability to dual wield weapons against a bigger variety of enemies than ever before. Assassin's Creed Valhalla releases on November 10th and will be available on Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Google Stadia and Windows PC. Head on over to assassinscreed.com to purchase the game and check out the links in the description for more. Go check out Assassin's Creed Valhalla and a huge thank you to Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed for sponsoring this video. So first things first, I needed to transfer the silhouettes from the front and side renderings of the Eivor character that I had onto the wood. So I cut out the silhouette of those characters, traced it onto the wood, and using those as my guide, I set about cutting the block of wood from the front and side perspectives only, and starting off with a reciprocating saw just to cut off some of those corner chunks, then eventually graduating to the turbo planer, which I used to pretty rapidly shape that silhouette. Now this whole process was really intimidating and I was just getting started. It's just the fact that once you take the wood away by cutting it or carving it or whatever, it's gone. Like you can't put it back without great difficulty or you know, it's just impossible. And while I love sculpting, like I really love sculpting, especially with clays and milliput and all sorts of different stuff, you can put it back normally, but stone and wood is something different. And yet something more timeless and epic about it. If you can pull it off, if you can take the right amount away, not too much, not too little, the satisfaction that I've experienced in the past in working with mediums like this is just really hard to beat. She's a fierce defendant of mine. I, as a Viking warrior, need a companion that's going to tear my enemies apart. We're gonna pillage and plunder? Yeah. I have an idea that I don't know if it'll work or not, but basically I want to stabilize this. And the idea is... <coughs> this is a bollard base, so it's just got this plastic weight thing. That sounded like kind of comical. And my idea is that if I drill a hole at the bottom of this and screw it, attach it, then it's got a weight that I can rotate and change my position, but also apply force and it's not gonna move. Yeah. 
I think this is actually a pretty solid plan. Next is where it gets a little tricky. I'm eyeballing the shape of my references face, particularly on the three quarter profiles, because I need to shave these corners back and start to reveal a head shape. Done. Beautiful. Look at that. It's got all the details and the silhouette. <laughs> Good bit? Good bit. Good bit. Good bit. Great. So next I actually do need to trace some of the details. We've actually got the rough, rough silhouette. In theory, all I need is a pokey tool and a powder marking tool. And I think charcoal should do nicely. Let's see if this works. Go like edge of the eye, top, bottom, center of the eyeball. Yeah, I just need to see that the charcoal comes out. Sort of works. This doesn't have to look good, don't worry. I've just got to get the blocking in. I know it's not looking good. I feel like this exercise has not only helped me refine the silhouette, it's put me in a particularly Viking mood. Feeling ready to make something badass. I started off this sculpting process using the die grinder and power tools and it just didn't feel right. And if I was gonna carve a Viking warrior, I, I had to do this right. So I put my power tools down and I picked up the hammer and my chisel set and set about carving. Now, turns out this really was the right choice, not just from a tone and aesthetic perspective, the, the feeling of carving the right way, but actually I could remove big chunks pretty easily. Because I didn't have to pick up and put down big heavy power tools, it sort of made for a closer connection to the wood, the material that I'm working with, that I could use my hands to sort of feel how much needed to be taken away. I could feel through my hands as I used the hammer and chisel how much was going to be taken away as I carved through it. And then coming back to that aesthetic standpoint, there, it really can't be beaten. That's not to say it was easy. I could feel in the first few hours my hands developing pretty hefty blisters. So I, I kept adding wrapping to my hand to protect it from blisters, which actually worked pretty well, to be honest. But yeah, this was a, a really hands-on and intense experience, and it was immersive and amazing. There's a quote that's said to be attributed to Michelangelo, obviously one of the greatest stone sculptors of the Renaissance. He said, apparently, the sculpture is already complete within the marble block before I start my work. It is already there and I just have to chisel away the superfluous material. Now I am not Michelangelo, but when you carve through wood or stone, you do sort of feel what he is saying. It's not that you know what it's gonna look like before you make it, but it really does feel like with every hit of the hammer, with every carve of the chisel, the shape that you're moving towards is inside the block and you're just moving closer to it. That's one of the reasons why working in this medium and in stone in our other mediums like this, which I haven't done often, but when I have, has always just been so satisfying. Intimidating, permanent, and satisfying. And I took my time with this piece. I really settled into the process of immersing myself into the creation of my Viking sculpture. And I sweat and I blistered and I worked late hours of, for many days. I got covered in dust and wood chips, but you know what? There are rituals and traditions in Viking mythology and history about rites of passage. And I honestly, in a weird way, feel kind of like this whole Viking theme has really connected me to the idea of immersing myself, earning the end result that I really wanted to achieve by putting my comfort and bravery to the test essentially to earn the result I wanted and I really wanted to make something memorable. has been my journey and on the other side I find my soul tearing apart to try and accomplish this task but in the end I have returned home a greater man than the man I was when I left. Is that convincing? Is that pretty? It was, it was pretty okay? Yeah. Yes. I'm a Viking baby.
Mm. I really wish that stayed in place. I am really glad that I did the bulk of the core sculpting, the, the start of the shaping, just with hammer and chisel. Not only because it feels more authentic, but actually because it's really fun. There's something about that repetitious sound. Even just the playing of the metal as you pick up your tool. Ah, it's good. But as authentic as I wanted to be, this has taken a very long time. Something's gotta give, I gotta speed it up a bit. So, we're back in the 21st century. I'm gonna start using my power tools again. And for this next part, when it comes to sculpture and refining the silhouette and adding details, I really need to be able to move uh, fairly freely. What I'm gonna try and do is, using my backup bit of wood as a base and a Lazy Susan attachment, in theory, if I attach this to both, I'll be able to turn this around. Let's give this a go. Okay, now this should be pretty stable and it's also not like a slip and sliding everywhere, which is good. I don't want it to. So let's just test and see if this is going to give me the control I need. Okay, yeah, that's cool. But just because I'm going to be leaning on technology doesn't mean it's going to be any less epic. So now with the finish line somewhat in sight, I moved on to using some power tools to further refine and detail and define my sculpture. Using primarily both the die grinder and the Dremel tool with carving bits, I set about properly shaping more subtle areas of the geometry, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and then eventually the hair. This is where while the shape is much clearer and I'm closer to the end result, it's in a way kind of more risky because the power tools take away wood very quickly. And there are some areas in particular, the eyes and the around the nostril area of the nose where you need to be a little braver. You need to carve a bit more away than you might feel comfortable with and it can be really easy for the Dremel to catch or for you to accidentally lean into it and take too much away. And that did happen a couple of times and I think I fixed it and masked it by sort of carving around it and smoothing things out. But yeah, it, it never got easy at any point in this process. It just shifted to a different kind of tricky. <laughs> Finally, my carving was coming together. And after going through and adding some of the final depth and some texture in the hair and so on and so forth, I needed to get to some of the more finishing steps, starting off by carving out that uh, wooden flat side base around the sculpture. I wanted this to feel entirely like a piece that would sit on a Viking hearth. So back to the hammer and chisel, I took out and shaped slightly inwardly to create a bit of a bust look and turn what was once this whole block of wood into a sculpture that would in its entirety look the part that I was going for. And as I was wrapping up the sculpture process, I almost loved it, but it, it just didn't feel right. So I needed to do some things to, to add some contrast and also make it look a bit more timeless. I used various wood stains because obviously at the moment it just looks like a big flat piece of wood that's been sculpted. And using this created a little bit more contrast and separation between the areas of the sculpture. The hair, the skin, the eyes, the tattoo, and a, a lot darker around the base and the torso of the body. Even now, as much as it was starting to come together, there was something missing. I wanted something that looked timeless, like it had stood on the hearth of a Viking home as a family heirloom. And so to achieve this, I decided as a final step, I would try and weather and age my sculpture. And this meant rubbing a bunch of dirt in it. There was nothing that was gonna make it feel like it sat around for hundreds of years, like literally scrubbing the earth into my sculpture. And honestly, as much as this felt like I was sort of desecrating all of my hard work and risking ruining my piece, this was the thing. This was the one step that tied everything together and made this piece really feel like it was finished perfectly, at least for the level that I'm at. And with that done, it was time to give this Viking warrior a proper home.
I feel like there should be a before and after shot. Can we cut to the before of my bright, optimistic self at the start of this video? <gasps> oh my God, that feels so good. I think this is actually a pretty solid plan. Sort of works. I'm a Viking, baby. It's <sighs> good. I've come back a changed man. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I surprised myself with this one. The last 5% of putting my wood sculpture together involved the staining and then the weathering and that completed it. Up until then, I wasn't so sure. And that, that's just one of those things where sometimes you just gotta move into your artwork with faith. I said to Gareth when we were filming, every artwork has an ugly stage, but I felt like this one was lasting quite a while. <laughs> so I didn't know if I'd get out of that ugly stage. But I did, I freaking love it. I'm so happy with it. And do you know the coolest thing is that that started off as that. I ended up with something I'm really, really proud of. And I really hope you guys have enjoyed the, the process, but that you're also impressed by the end result because I don't know, I feel like I impressed myself with this one. It's good to be proud of yourself. Huge thank you to Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed Valhalla for sponsoring this video. I can't do projects like this without having such a wonderful sponsor and also something so thematically cool to work with, which I always wanted to try wood carving and having a Viking theme to work off is just oh, so good. Thank you for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. I need a shower. Real bad. <laughs> I have achieved my trial. All right, Dracula. At long last, I have reached the end of my trial. All right, Borat. <laughs> Very nice. I have risen to the child. <laughs> I'm about to suck your blood. <laughs> At long last, I have returned. <laughs> it has been many days. <laughs> it has been many days since I have started me sculpt. Me sculpt. <laughs> Italian. Me sculpt. Me sculpt. I'm going to stop looking to you for like approval because I'm just going to laugh every time. This is my full time job. <laughs> nice. Should have had water ready. Yeah. All right, that was a good. Yeah. That was a good practice. We'll roll this time. Yeah. Oh, golly. Mmm. Uh, Poop. Yeah. 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 Yeah.